Hi, welcome to Holly's Dreadful Colors. I know it's been a while since I made a video and my intention was to make a lot of videos right away. Um, you know how life can get in the way of those kinds of things. So, um, I'd like to, I watched my video. I've kind of left off in some areas. I'm going to start kind of in a basic spot. Um, I have some other videos that I've already made that are ready to upload, but this one is kind of maybe like the prequel of those ones. So let me at least um, get started here. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is my setup. This setup is my setup. This is after trying different stuff. Um, this may not be your setup. This may not be what works for you and your setup, but this is what works for me. And um, so let me just go over it real fast before I start with uh, the next part. Okay. So here we go down here. This so what do I have here? I have a um, towel on my desk. Um, I have these little picnic, um, they're like supposed to hold picnic blankets on a picnic table. I have it over here on both sides. Um, I have a dish mat that I like. Um, you can use both ways. There's this side, there's this side. I guess I prefer this side. Um, then I have this. This is called a felting pad. Um, I used to use a sushi roller. That seems to be what people tend to use. It's some kind of bamboo rolling thing. Um, I find that they, um, especially as many as I make, they start to shred. Um, there is no point in me using one. It will be gone in a week and I just keep having to buy them. These last me a year. Um, and I don't even need to change it out it actually absorbs a lot of the water so i don't have nearly as much water issues as i had before with the sushi mat where my t towels i'd have to constantly throw them in the dryer because they were soaked um and they actually give a really nice texture so there's that i also keep a drawer over here with all my supplies um i cannot roll anymore without a glove on. I only do it with my rolling hand. I don't need it with my other hand, but I do need it with this one. Um, I also keep a handy, um, this is a glass, like an amber glass. Hey, be quiet, I'm doing a video. Sorry, my kids are in the room. They've been told to be quiet, but hopefully they will stay that way. Um, and I just fill this with water and soap, and this is how I start all of my initial rolls of wool. Alrighty, I have been waiting. Let's see, is this the right one? I think it's this one. Okay, so, is it this one? Just make sure. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to go over roving wool with you right now and how it comes. Um, I also keep this handy dandy yardstick with me. I kind of leave it down here at the end so that I can measure things um, when I need to get the proper length for what I'm doing. Okay, so today I'm working with Lincoln Roving Wool. This has actually become one of my favorites, okay? It comes, I got a whole pound of this. No, this I is probably a half pound. I was known I was heading. Teodoro, there is no talking while I'm doing my video. Now, um, this is how it comes, and this is all connected, okay? There is one end, which I just lost. Oh, no, I didn't, okay. And um, this is how they come, all right? And... So what I do is I start by lining it up at the one inch and um, let's see here. I do a lot of, I do mostly double ended. I do do single ended and I will do a single ended video for you. But either, even if I'm doing a single ended, I would still create what I need um, by doing the same thing. So. I'm going to make them all the same length. I'm just yes, it bending it. I'll do a little scan in a second so you can yes. see. Okay, so here's what it looks like on one end. I'm just kind of started here. I am just kind of looping it along. Kind of like those really long lines at the rides. Um, until I have some. So, uh, so the way that I know is this is going to be a set of... A, a piece. This is going to be a piece. This is going to be a piece. So, one, 
two, three. I have three of them. I can typically, with, th with Lincoln, I'm getting four dreadlocks per piece, okay? So that means right now I'm at, with three of them done, I'm at 12 dreadlocks, okay? And those are about pencil thin, or pencil width. If I want more, obviously if I want 16, I would go another one. If I'm making a full set, I may not do it all in one go. I may do half of it, I may cut half of it, and then save the rest for later, okay? Um, now, let me show you how this looks. I'm gonna put all this back. I specifically need to get this set up for my next set, but I've been waiting to go over that with you. Now, over here, I have the bag where I have already section some out okay so here's my section right here oh let me bring it back over here here's my section i already cut it you can cut it you can pull it i find just faster to cut and i always just make sure my ends don't look blunt um there is just ways to do that it is just an extra rolling it's not complicated okay so this is my section okay and like i said this sections into four to being pencil width. Now, if you want smaller than that, then make, you know, make this into three pieces. If you want bigger, then, you know, um, then you section this in half and then don't section again. But how I'm gonna do it is I usually try to go with the grain of my wool, okay? Right here, there's kind of like a little middle section. Um, you wanna be as even as possible, that way your dreads are about the same. And you're gonna pull it apart and then I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna turn it over and I, I don't know if you can see this, but it does kind of have a little spot. So then I'm gonna pull it again. Okay, here we go. There's my section. I will do it again with this one. So I'm kind of trying to find like an even spot right here. Looks good to me. Boom, okay. Now I've got my sections. All right. Um, Initially, let's see here, I can move my ruler now. Sometimes I just do one section at a time because I don't have time to do much more than that. Um, one of the things that happened this year was I had a baby and I was pregnant and I was sick and then also just extra tired during my pregnancy and all sorts of stuff. So um, that put off me trying to make videos which are better at night because I don't have my kids up and about making all sorts of noise as they probably are right now okay um that's about what i do for my roll you can kind of see the difference between that this is not fully felted this is just an initial roll to get it where i want it so i can get the shape so that they don't shed on me so that they don't get stuck to other pieces um depending on how i want to do this i kind of pull a little bit that's how I create my ends so that they are not blunted, just gentle. Um, sometimes you don't even need to do that because it, as you pull it, as you roll, it will do that. Like actually, see, look, I've actually made this too thin here and I might, I'm just gonna pull that piece off because um, I showed you and I demonstrated a little bit too much. So you really just lightly pull, okay? And like I said, even the rolling will actually pull the wool down so um, you may not even need to pull it. Um, I just kind of gauge that as needed. Some wool, you know, but I am pushing pretty hard. I'm not doing this lightly, okay? Um, I do want an effective thing here going on. And once it starts to get pretty soapy, then you can do a little bit of these without having to spray again. Um, it will absorb it and then you'll have to spray again, but sometimes, um, Okay, I do this with all the wool. It doesn't matter what texture you're going for, this initial roll is extremely important. This is how you form it into what you want. Um, whether you want kinky, curly, wavy, straight, this is still the way to do it. If you have a wool that's going to kink, you will notice that as it dries almost immediately, it is going to have a wave to it because that is what it wants to do naturally. It does not hurt my, my texture at all to straight roll this. Um, and this is the only way to get it fully felted in the shape that I want um, before my next step that I take to get a, um, a different texture, okay? And I'm gonna do the texture on a different video. I know you guys are probably anxious, um, but this one was more important to get a basic out of there. Um, let's see, I have um, 
What's this one? Oh, it's on here. I think. Let's see here. This wool. Well, let me find uh, some of this wool here for you. This is the texture of Lincoln. Um, you can have it be less kinky. You, see? you can have it less kinky. You could have it less um, wavy. Um, if you just were to leave it and let it dry like this or do another roll to make sure it's more felted, it would still have a slight wave to it. Um, the more you manipulate your wool, the more you're going to get a certain texture. So this was the texture that I wanted, but this is what, this is the kind of texture you can get. Um, this one, honestly, I can't remember what this pur pink, this purple one was. Is it, was it Lincoln? I know they're a little bit thicker. This one was also Lincoln. Um, and I got that one pretty um, thin as well. This in my hair, I should have shown that. My hair has Lincoln wool um, a permanent, um, extensions. So you have learned how I um, separate my wool. If you have not learned that already, um, let me be clear. Some wool, it, there is a general sense of you, know, you separate it into half and then you separate it into fourths and you usually get um, four pieces oh, yeah, per um, one of these. Okay. But not all wools like that. Some wool is puffier. Cool. Some wool you have to separate into thinner pieces to get the pieces that I just demonstrated. Um, I said 12. And some of them you need to go uh, bigger because of the way that it's carded in. So definitely like bulky wool roving or certain wool you will need to um, keep bigger spots. So maybe you only break this into a half and then you roll half because it would still be the same size as this and then also it depends Whoa. on how thick you want to go um i have someone that Whoa. was uh, i don't have it handy um i had someone that wanted single-ended sharpie thick Whoa. excuse you um Whack. um sharp uh, sharpie thick um Whack. dreadlocks Whack. and Two, those three, ones were four. um took a bit more wool and more rolling. They did make my hands sore because it's so thick. It yeah, takes a bit to get you. it fully felted. Um, it is One, easier to felt two, something three. thinner for sure. Um, but if you get them too wow. thin, um, they may not look very, I mean, especially with wool, they may have a different look to them. I do have a client coming up and I will probably do a demonstration on it. Um, she has um, sister locks, micro locks. Um, she has thinning on the top of her hair. Um, she is trying some different things, but what we've decided is we're going to make her a set of pretty thin, um, let me see, pretty thin locks. Um, so these right here are, um, braided. And so I make, I take, you know, one section of these and I would break this up into three pieces to create this size braid okay so the little sections that we have here i'm gonna make a whole set of those in little sections and we're gonna see how they go and i'm going to um kind of braid and then um crochet them into her hair to kind of create a little bit of a weave on the top of her head so she has more space. so i will do a video when i do that too that is new for me i don't quite know how that's going to all come about but i'm kind of excited to try something new um another thing that i'm going to be trying is using multi strands to create a fish net, a fish, not fish neck, fish tail braid out of wool, which I haven't done before. I have tried and it doesn't quite work. Um, I think I only did like a four piece and that, but I feel like if you go any bigger, then it's going to be a thick braid. Braid. Um, it won't be thin like this, but there could be something to it that maybe it's like an accent piece. So I'm going to do a little demonstration on that too. So that is to let you know what's coming up. I already have two other videos that I've already done um, that I will be uploading when it's appropriate um, in the course of how I want to show you some different stuff. If you have any requests, um, put them in the comments. I will be reading. I will be trying to make time to do this. Um, and I will also be uploading soon a single-ended um, 
demonstration so you can see how I would do those. Um, again, as I probably will say in all of my videos, this is a craft. Own your craft. Learn your craft. I can show you some basics and I can show you the way I do it, but that does not mean that that is the way to do it. Um, you may not like um, really well felted dreadlocks. You might like them puffy. You might like, um, you know, half of it puffy, half of it not. You might want Lux ends. That will be another one that I post. Um, you might want, you know, it to be looser and softer. You might like different kinds of wool. Um, you may like working with different kinds of wool. I have my favorites after trying different stuff. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's your favorite. It just means it's my favorite and what I prefer. This can be sheddy Lincoln wool. This can be a little rough until it get, kind of gets broken in. Some people may not like that. Um, so you want to experiment, take what I have for information, and then just kind of run with it and figure out what works for you, okay? Um, this is your set. Uh, and then, you know, I play with different kinds of wool, not just for my own purposes, but because I make them for other people and I want to make sure I give them what would work for them because if they have something that's too shedy and it doesn't work for them or it's irritating their scalp those are all things that I have to take into account so um yeah you just run with it ask me questions and comments I will see if I can get all these videos out to you guys thanks for your patience all right subscribe like thanks bye